वेलकम स्टूडेंट्स आई होप यू ऑलरेडी हैव वॉच द फर्स्ट वीडियो एंड द कंटेंट दैट वी डिस्कस्ड इन द फर्स्ट वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू प्रोसीड फ्रॉम देयर ऑनवर्ड्स सो बिफोर वी स्टार्ट द लेक्चर आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू हाईलाइट द थिंग्स दैट वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न इन दिस लेक्चर सो वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट कंडीशनल स्टेटमेंट ट्रूथ टेबल Uh, related to conditional statement why conditional statement has a certain truth value uh, and we will give you some interesting examples to remember those things and we will also talk about what is the converse inverse and contrapositive of a statement and how they are related to uh, each other so uh, let us start first of all uh, to uh, start with we are going to talk about how the conditional statements are defined so you can read it here that let p and q be two proposition the conditional statement p implies q is the proposition if p then q the conditional statement p implies q is false when p is true and q is q is false and true otherwise uh, so this is a very important fact to remember which we will highlight in the latter part also but uh, two things which you can clearly say here that uh, if i am writing p implies q then p is said to be the hypothesis we can also call it antecedent or premise and q is called its conclusion or consequence uh, because conditional statements occur quite frequently in uh, logic so there are different ways to express it and here are the list of some of the frequently used Uh, ways to express the conditional statement one way is that if p then q sometimes we can also write if p q we also call it p is sufficient for q q if p q when p a necessary condition for p is q q unless negation of p p implies q which is quite frequent p only if q a sufficient condition for q is p q whenever p this is also uh, very frequent and q is necessary for p and q follows from p so as you will solve problems and come across situations uh, you will be uh, well versed with different uses of uh, this conditional statement but truth tables are important and why truth tables are important because if i uh, talk about uh, the truth table uh, it is a uh, something that is slightly counter intuitive when i say counter intuitive it means what and i will explain you through the example that if p is true and q is true then p implies q is true and in two other cases when p is false irrespective of what is the value of this q statement this will uh, the p implies q will also be true so it is false in only one case it is false in only one case when p is true and q is false so in that case the statement p implies q is false and it is important to remember that in all other cases it will remain true to uh, explain this uh, i am going to uh, take one example and listen this very carefully you will understand it so suppose uh, we talk about a situation that uh, you are taking a course in mathematics and uh, your teacher has uh, told you uh, that if you uh, attend uh, more than 90% classes right if you attend more than 90% classes then you will uh, get a grade in mathematics right so what is the condition that if you attend 90% class classes then you get an a now there are two statement here first is you attend 90% classes let us call this a statement p and you get an a let us call this a statement q 
Now let us talk about the possibilities. So the first possibility is that P is true. It means you attend 90% classes and you get A grade means Q is also true. So means in that case the P implies Q remains true. But I want to tell you a very uh, important situation in which you will feel cheated. Suppose you are the student and your teacher has promised that if you attend 90% classes then you get an A. So when you will feel like you have been cheated, you will feel like you have been cheated when you uh, did attend 90% class but the teacher has not given you the A grade, right? There may be other possibility. So that this, this possibility when you have attended 90% classes means the first statement is true. But you have not got A grade. So that statement is false. In this case you will feel like you have been cheated. Now other two cases that you do not attend 90% class. But since you were very sincere throughout the uh, semester and you attended all the classes rigorously, your teacher might have thought that, okay, this uh, guy deserve an A grade, so he might have given you A grade. And in that case also, you will not feel like you have been cheated. So the P implies Q value remains true. And the last situation when you did not attend 90% class, the teacher did not award you A grade. In that situation also, you will not feel like you have been cheated. So only situation in which you will feel like that you have been cheated is when you attend 90% class but you did not get A grade, then that case you will feel like cheated. And this is one of the ways to remember uh, the conditional statement P implies Q. Now uh, if you look at this example that I have taken, uh, in this example uh, P is the statement that Maria learns discrete mathematics and Q is the statement Maria will find a good job. So we have to express P implies Q as a statement in English. So there are different ways to express it. One way is that if Maria learns discrete mathematics then she finds a good job. Right? If then. This is one way that we have seen earlier. There are other ways also that Maria will find a good job when she learns discrete maths. For Maria to get a good job, it is sufficient for her to learn discrete mathematics. And Maria will find a good job unless she does not learn discrete mathematics. So these are some of the ways of representing the statement P implies Q where uh, it has been highlighted. Now if you uh, look at uh, this uh, example. So uh, if today is Friday then 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. So here there are two statement. Today is Friday and 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. So today is Friday if I call it P and if I call it Q then the Q statement is true. 2 plus 3 is equal to 5 is a true statement. Now irrespective of what is the value of P as you remember that if P is false, uh, then uh, the truth value of Q does not matter, right? So, uh, but uh, just to get an idea, let me quickly uh, write it so that you understand it uh, uh, better. Let us write it quickly. So, P is true, Q is true, P implies Q is true, P is true, Q is false, this is false. This is false and this is true or false, it is still, still remains true. So what I am trying to highlight here, that since 2 plus 3 is equal to 5, since this is true, right, since this is true, so no matter what is the truth value of the previous statement, the hypothesis P implies Q uh, remains true. But if you look at this statement, if today is Friday, then 2 plus 3 is equal to 6. Now 2 plus 3 is equal to 6 is a false statement. This is false. Right? This is false. Now if today's Friday is true, on what day it will be true? On Fridays this statement will be true. So in that case this statement, if today is Friday, 
it will uh, then 2 plus 3 is equal to 6 will be a false statement right so this statement i repeat if today is friday then 2 plus 3 is equal to 6 will be a false statement only on friday and it is true on all other days of the week why it is true on all other days because on all other days of the week the first statement today is friday will be a false statement and once the first statement the 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 hypothesis is false the statement uh, uh, the truth value of the uh, conclusion does not matter right uh, we are uh, going to talk about uh, some few important thing related to this now if i talk about uh, uh, conditional statement p implies q then uh, we should also be aware about what is converse inverse and contrapositive of a conditional statement so if p implies q is the statement the converse of p implies q is q implies p right if i say p is a statement q is a statement p implies q what is the converse of p implies q that is q implies p that is the converse of the statement now uh, we can write what is negation of p we can write what is negation of q so negation of q implies negation of p that is called as contrapositive that is called as contrapositive and if i write negation of p implies negation of q that is called as the inverse of the statement i hope you can see it now let us quickly write the truth table and I am writing true, 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 false, false, true, false, false. This is true, false, true, true. Q implies P. True, true, false, true. I hope you got it. And negation of P. So, what will be negation of P? Negation of P will be false false true true what will be negation of q false true false true what will be negation of q implies negation of p true false true false and then this is true and uh, this is also true and what is negation of p implies negation of q true true false and true so I want you to understand one thing that if you look at this contrapositive statement that is true false true true and if you look at this original statement conditional statement both of them have the same truth value. So it means that a statement conditional statement P implies Q and negation of Q implies negation of P are equivalent of each other. Two statements are said to be equivalent of each other if they have the same truth value and if you look at the uh, inverse of the statement like negation of p implies negation of q and the converse of it that is p implies q then they are also true you can uh, equivalent you can see it is true this is also true this is true this is true this is false this is false and this is true and this is true so the converse and inverse of a conditional statements are equivalent of each other so before we conclude this uh, i hope you are clear about what is the conditional statement what is its truth table and what is converse inverse and contrapositive of a conditional statement a statement p implies q is equivalent to its contrapositive and uh, the converse of the statement and inverse of the statements are equivalent of each other thank you we will uh, take some examples and proceed further in the next class. That is all for this video.